entire house where they were sitting, divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? The second reading is Acts 2, 14-21. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The next reading is 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 14, and verse 27. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. This is the word of the Lord.
Thank you. Toggling over to Art, so feel free to let your mind on um, You might have guessed that I'm rather fond of Pentecost. I, I really like this holy day. Um, maybe it's because it's always near my birthday, and so the whole world is celebrating while I, I enjoy a year older. Uh, maybe it is because it's near the end of the school year, so it, it feels like there's a sense of finishing something at this time of year and this season of the church year. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's the, it feels like it's something is beginning at the beginning of summer, and there's a sense of this vast, open uh, freedom in front of us, and that is what Pentecost represents for me. Maybe it is because we call Pentecost the birthday of the church, and I have always loved the church. And the church has always been a home and a place of welcome for me, and I hope for others. And it's certainly a place of purpose and calling, and that is what Pentecost and the season of Pentecost is all about. God's purpose for us and God's calling for us. I'd like to think that my love of the Holy Day is theological uh, because Pentecost reminds us, reminds me of God's presence with us. But as I think about it honestly, what doesn't remind us of God's presence with us? Um, Pentecost is a day that we recognize the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church, to the disciples, the day we celebrate the Holy Spirit, and I love the Holy Spirit. I don't understand the Holy Spirit, really, at all. Um, the Holy Spirit is mystery and power and imagination and creativity and diversity. And as soon as I think I've got the Holy Spirit figured out, something changes, the wind blows, and my understanding changes. Did you get that really bad pun there, the double meaning, the wind blows? Uh, it is a bad pun, but the Spirit of God is often referred to as wind or breath. In fact, both the Greek and the Hebrew, the Greek pneuma and the Hebrew ruach, can be translated all three ways, spirit, breath, and wind. So often in the Bible, frequently in the Bible, uh, when God is present, there is a rushing wind, a gentle breeze, a powerful storm, a, a quiet whisper, a deep breath, a flutter, a sigh, a gasp. All of those will point to the Holy Spirit moving among us, in us, and through us. Frequently, God will ride the wind of the day and settle into our own breathing, rhythmic and certain and ongoing within us, around us, through us, for us. That is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of God, the presence of God, the purpose of God. The Holy Spirit is fire and energy and chaos as well as, at the same time, control and peace and sustained provision. I love the Holy Spirit. I don't understand the Holy Spirit. But I am understood by the Holy Spirit. God reaches us and empowers us and moves us through the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. We worship God in spirit. We touch and know and experience God in that Holy Spirit. Having, having said all of that, there is so much more to say and really nothing that needs to be said. This kind of sermon could turn into a very confusing sermon very quickly. So, moving on to the practical. Part of why I love this day and Pentecost and the Holy Spirit is that we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit when God poured spiritual gifts over the disciples, over the church, into each disciple. We believe this gifting was the first of many gifts given to the church. That, in fact, the Holy Spirit continues to bring gifts to every church and every person as gift of God. These gifts come in varieties of ways. Sometimes we recognize them, sometimes we don't recognize them, but always the gifts God gives are meant to call us to purpose, to call us to God. 
we are always filled with God's presence. But always the gifts give us, given to us are, are meant to encourage us, to encourage one another. We are meant to use any gift that we have been given in order to help people, in order to help others to connect to God as well. The gifts are wide and wide, wildly different, uh, diverse, uh, from artistic talent to musical abilities to wisdom in decision making to friendliness and welcoming nature to anything else you can think of, anything else that you are able to share. Our gifts are wider than our imaginations. God promises that each and every one of us has been given a gift by the Holy Spirit, or many gifts to share. Many gifts given freely and fully for us to also give freely and fully. The reading from Corinthians today helps to clarify some of the gifts of the Spirit among us. The Corinthians were uh, the Corinthians was written several years after the events of the Acts chapter 2 story. Uh, and Corinthians was written to a church that was trying to figure out how to live out their faith and how to live out their commitment to Christ, much like we are today. And much like some churches are today, they were arguing about which gift was better, which gift was more important in the church, and therefore which person was more important in the church. Um, which gifts proved that you have received the Spirit of God. And amazingly, some of us are still arguing about which gifts make us better or more worthy of God's love. They thought that some gifts were absolutely and obviously better than other gifts, that some people were, therefore, better. They thought it was better, for instance, to be a great speaker than to be a quiet person of prayer. Or that it might be better to speak in tongues than to tell a Bible story. The scripture for today, Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, says, no, 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 no. That is all wrong. All the gifts of the Spirit are good gifts of the Spirit. Every gift of the Spirit is honorable and worthy. And all of God's gifts of the Spirit are given to the right person at the right time for the right purpose. The key is to use any gift from God to glorify God and to help other people. One gift is not better than another gift. Every person who receives the Spirit of God receives the same full Holy Spirit of God. I'm not any more or any less filled with the Spirit of God than you are. One person is not any more or any less blessed by God's Spirit. All of us receive God's Holy Spirit. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all equally blessed, equally empowered with God's gifts, and equally called to share those gifts, to serve God in the world. The call of that scripture is to let the Spirit of God move, really to let the Spirit of God explode, really, in, in and through you and in all you do. That's what happened on that first Pentecost, an explosion of the Holy Spirit, wind and fire, reaching everyone, touching everyone, filling everyone. Let God's Spirit excite and inspire you, and the power of God will transform. The scripture says you are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. You have gifts to share. You have a part to play. You have a job to do. <coughs> you have been filled with the one true, powerful Holy Spirit of God. Scripture says, and we believe. <coughs> you can. How is this season? I'm not. Okay. And collectively, God can work miracles of grace and healing and energy and hope among us and within us and through us. Let God's power move through you to transform the world. Let God's presence empower you to reach out to others, to share the good news of God's grace. 
On that first day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God was visible among them. The Spirit of God was touching and transforming them. On that first day, the disciples received courage and power, energy and joy, passion and inspiration, so that they ran out into the street, into Jerusalem, and told everybody what they were experiencing, what miracles were happening among them. That first Pentecost, 3,000 people were touched by God's grace and moved to serve Jesus Christ. There were only 12 disciples, but 3,000 people were moved by those 12 in one day. How much more can God move among us and use us to live the good news of God's love? If we just get out of the way of God's Spirit and let the Spirit pour through us into the world. You have been called. You have been touched. You have been transformed. You are alive in Christ. You have been given gifts of the Holy Spirit. Use them to be the body of Christ in the world. To be the hands and feet of Jesus moving and helping in the world today. I want you to imagine what that would look like for the church. 2,000 years ago, 3,000 people were saved. 3,000 people felt the presence of God. Imagine what that would look like for us today in our church, in our community. Imagine if all of our gifts were let loose in the world and empowered by God to do the work of God. What would that look like? Imagine what good God could do for us. Visualize it. Think about it. And a picture, so to speak. What could be changed? What could be, what, who could we reach? How could we help people? How could people see God moving in the world? How might God use us to share love in the world? 2,000 years ago, the Spirit of God swept through a room like this. Actually, it was probably a room much smaller than this. God's Spirit came in wind and fire in power and purpose. God's Spirit moved and 3,000 people came to Jesus and then went out to serve Jesus. Just imagine what God could do with us. Just imagine what God will do with you if you let God move. If you breathe in the Spirit and breathe out God's grace. Just imagine. And now go out into the world and share the good news of God's love. Live the grace that you have received through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to share what you believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed, and I think we'll leave the art on and hope you have it memorized or have it in the scripture before. I invite you to stand and share what you believe. Confess your faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker and in Jesus And I was remembering it was one year ago not exactly on this day, but this season, this, on Pentecost, that we were in the parking lot, worshiping for the first time after three months. And uh, I think that's what Pentecost is a lot about, celebrating uh, the varieties of gifts and the way we adapt and the changes we make and the way God moves uh, and has moved for 5,000 years, not just the 2,000 of, of Christianity. Um, I, I'm rather fond of Pentecost, and maybe it's because it falls near my birthday, and so everybody in the world is celebrating with me. Uh, maybe it's because it's uh, near the end of school, and so there's this sense of finishing something, completion, or the beginning of summer, so there's this sense of starting something, and it's a long season ahead of us, all of summer into fall. 
Um, and there's this vast sense of openness and freedom in front of us. Maybe I like Pentecost because uh, it's the birthday of the church, and I love the church. And uh, the church has always been a place of welcoming and home for me and uh, celebration and family. Uh, so I love that celebration part. But it's also a place of purpose and calling for me, but also for everyone that God has a purpose for us and Pentecost is about celebrating those purposes that God works out among us. I'd like to think that my love of holy, this holy day is theological, you know, profound, uh, because Pentecost reminds me of God's presence with us and all of us of that presence of God. But then again, when, what doesn't remind us of God's presence and uh, all throughout our lives, God is with us. Pentecost is the day that we recognize the coming of the Holy Spirit, the day we celebrate the Holy Spirit. And I love the Holy Spirit. I don't understand the Holy Spirit at all. Uh, the Holy Spirit is mystery and power and imagination and creativity and diversity. As, uh, as soon as I think I get the Holy Spirit figured out, the wind blows and my understanding changes and something is new again. Um, so did you get that double meaning there, the wind blows? Really bad preacher pun? Yes. Uh, because the Spirit is referred to as the wind, the breath of God. Uh, both the Greek, which is pneuma, and the Hebrew, which is ruach, are, are wonderful words that can be translated in all three ways. Wind, breath, spirit. So when you hear in the Bible of wind, breath, or spirit, you are hearing about God and the way God moves. Frequently in the Bible, a rushing wind, a gentle breeze, a powerful storm, a quiet whisper, a deep breath, a sigh, a flutter, a gasp even, might represent the coming of God, the presence of God in someone's life, in our lives. Frequently, God will ride the wind and settle in on our own breathing and in our own breath. Um, within us, around us, God through us and for us. The Holy Spirit is the power of God, the purpose of God, the presence of God. The Spirit is fire and energy and chaos and creativity. And at the same time, the Spirit of God is control and peace and sustained provision. I love the Holy Spirit. I don't understand the Holy Spirit, but I, I am understood by the Holy Spirit. God reaches us. God empowers us. God moves through the Holy Spirit. We worship God in spirit and in truth. We touch and know and experience God in that Holy Spirit. And except all that, um, there is so much more to say, and yet really nothing that needs to be said. This could be a, a very confusing sermon very quickly if I keep spinning into this mystery that is spirit. So, moving on to the practical. The practical of Pentecost is about using and sharing your gifts. And that's part of what we're doing today. All the musicians. Cassie drawing, Dave and Davis working tech. It is God moving in spirit among us, God using our gifts to share whatever message is needed in this day for us. Part of why I love this day is that we celebrate this coming of the Holy Spirit being poured out over each person, the spiritual gifts over the church and individual gifts for each and every disciple, each and every person that God has ever created receives these gifts of God. In fact, the Holy Spirit brings gifts to every church in every time and every person as a gift of God. These gifts come in varieties of ways. Sometimes we recognize them, sometimes we don't. But always, the gifts of God are meant to, to call us to purpose, to call us to God, to to bring out that which God has created in us and for us. We are meant to use our gifts, any gifts that we are given. We, we are meant to use these gifts in order to help people to connect to God. 
The gifts are widely and wildly diverse, from artistic talent to musical abilities to wisdom and decision making to the gift of healing to friendliness and a welcoming nature to anything else, any other gift that you might have have been given that is a gift of God. Our gifts are wider than our imaginations. What God can do with and through us is wider than our dreaming can be. God promises that, that each and every one of us has been given a gift or many gifts to share. And we are called to use those gifts. The reading from Corinthians, which you heard earlier or is printed in the bulletin, um, helps to clarify some of the gifts of the Spirit among us. Corinthians was written several years after the events of Acts, the book of Acts, written to a church that was trying to figure out how to live our faith and our commitment to Jesus Christ, much like we are doing today. They were, at that time, this might be surprising for you that a church was arguing, but the church at the time was arguing over which gifts were better than other gifts, which gifts were more important, which gifts proved that you had received the Holy Spirit. And they were actually arguing over which gifts were better. Uh, amazingly, we're sometimes still arguing over that. Maybe not in our church individually, but in our collective church, universal, God's church in the world, we argue over which gift is better, which spiritual movement is better, and the truth is, all of God's gifts of the Spirit are beautiful gifts of the Spirit. Amazingly, um, they thought that some gifts were, were obviously better uh, than other gifts. They thought perhaps it was better to be a great speaker than to be a quiet person of prayer. They thought that perhaps it was better to speak in tongues and uh, share that particular gift that was to share a Bible story. And the scripture for today said, no, 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 you've got it wrong. All gifts of the Spirit are good gifts of the Spirit. All gifts of the Spirit are God's gifts to you and are given to the right person at the right time for the right purpose. The key is to use any gift from God to glorify God and to help other people. One gift is not better than another gift. Every person who receives the Spirit of God receives the same Spirit of God. I'm not any more or any less filled with the Spirit of God than you are. One person is not any more or less blessed by God's Spirit in the world. We are all equally blessed by God's love and grace. We are all one in Christ. We are equally blessed, equally empowered with God's gifts, and equally called to share those gifts in the world, whatever your gifts and talents are, to share those gifts to serve God in the world. The call of that, excuse me, <coughs> the call of that scripture is to let the Spirit of God move, to, to let the Spirit of God explode, really. That's what happened on that first Pentecost Day, let the Spirit of God explode in and through you. On that first Pentecost, an explosion of the Spirit happened, wind and fire reaching and touching every single person, and inspiring and filling every single person. Let God's Spirit excite and inspire, inspire you, and the power of God will transform not only you, but the world around you. The scripture says you are the body of Christ. All of you. If it had been written by a southerner, it would say y'all are the body of Christ. I think that's a better translation, actually. Maybe I'll write that in. You have gifts to share. You have a part to play. You have a job to do. You have been filled with the, with the true, powerful, holy spirit of God. Every single one of you. And collectively, God can work miracles of grace and miracles of healing and energy and hope and goodness. Let God's power move through you. Let God's power transform the world through you. 
Let God's presence empower you, give you whatever you need each day to reach out to others and to share the good news of God's grace and mercy. On that first Pentecost day, the Spirit was visible to people, visible among them. On that first Pentecost day, the disciples received courage and power, energy and joy, passion and inspiration, and they understood finally what their purpose was. Even with Jesus not with them there on earth, the Spirit was with them. They understood their purpose in the world. So they ran out into the street and started telling people, telling everybody, what they had seen, what they had heard, what miracles had happened among them. That first Pentecost, 3,000 people were inspired and touched by God's grace and moved out to serve Jesus Christ. Now there were 12 people, 11 people in the room, the disciples, but 3,000 people were moved by those 12 in one day. How much more could God use the uh, to live the good news if we just let God move, if we just get out of the way of God's Spirit and let the Spirit pour through us into the world. You have been called. You have been touched, each individually and all collectively. You have been transformed by Jesus Christ. You are alive in Jesus Christ. You have been given gifts by the Holy Spirit. Use those gifts to be the body of Christ in the world, to be the hands and the feet of Jesus here and now in the world today, to do what Jesus would do. I want you to imagine what that would look like for the church, for the world. What would it look like if all our gifts were let loose in the world doing the work of God? Imagine what that would look like. Imagine what God could do through that, through us, through the church, universal. Visualize it. Think about even the details of it. What could be changed? What, who could we reach? How could we help people in the world? How could, we, how could people see God because of how we share our gifts? How might God use us to share our lives? Think about it. 2,000 years ago, the Spirit of God swept through a room like this. Actually, it was probably a room smaller than this. God's Spirit came in wind and fire and power and purpose. God's Spirit moved 3,000 people who came to Jesus. Just imagine what God could do with us. Just imagine what God will do with you. Just imagine God pouring over us and through us into the world. And beyond imagining, go out into the world and share the good news of God's love. Live the grace that you have already received. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
We pray for Marie and for her family as she uh, tries to find balance and is able to overcome some uh, challenges right now. And we thank you for good medicines and good doctors and ways that you have helped us to uh, be better aware of mental health and be able to, to deal with struggles that are happening. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I also pray for Marilyn, for her wonderful heart, that she will heal quickly and feel your presence surrounding her through your grace each moment and have energy to be able to go through the therapy and the things that she has to go to recover. We thank you for her family. We ask you to bless them near and far that uh, they may not worry as much as they're going to worry. 
and that they also may know that you have Maryland in your hands and by your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. I pray for uh, two folks just diagnosed with cancer uh, as they find out what's happening this week as they go to doctors. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you know our hearts, you know our concerns, you know our sighs and our words that we cannot express. We thank you for healing and for grace. We pray all this in Jesus' name. You taught us to pray as we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, be with all of you, now and evermore. Amen.